What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. So it's currently Thursday the 26th of September and tomorrow I'm heading to Amsterdam for a meetup. So just last minute packing, getting things ready, stuff like that. But I wanted to bring behind the scenes and almost do like a vlog. So going to bring you through day to day today, but along the way I'm going to be answering some questions. Some of the questions that you've been sending over Instagram, which I really appreciate by the way. And um, yeah, overall it's going to be good to get into it. So we're going to start off with the charts with a question on support and resistance. So hopping onto the charts for the first question, I thought it'd be really good to actually show you a live example of this. So the question being, why don't you trade support and resistance? Why don't you trade it? So with that in mind, let's hop on the charts. So I want to highlight a case on dollar CAD. Let's have a look at this. So I've just outlined, I've kept it pretty simple. I could absolutely cover the charts. I absolutely cake the charts with indicators, but in this case, just want to keep it as simple as possible to showcase the, the true nature of this. So with this in mind, by the way, I have nothing absolutely against uh, support resistance or the style in general. I think it works for, for some people. And if it does work for you, then keep doing what you're doing and keep smashing it. That's absolutely incredible. For, but for me personally, within my style, it just never really resonated with me. I always found like there was either too much clutch on the charts or it was just a black and white picture. For example, if price broke here, for example, this bigger support resistance level, it would almost be like, okay, well, is the trading valid now? There, there wouldn't be any details behind it. It's, whereas now I know that, okay, well, it's not necessarily about the fact that we're broken. It's about how we break. Whereas back then it was just, it's just black and white picture. If price doesn't reject here and we don't get deceleration, then the trades off the cards, wait for a break and retest and the head higher. So it, there was just too much black and white picture. There was never any details behind that. So for example, with this, let's say, for example, we're looking at this selling opportunity here. So no brainer with this example on dollar CAD, we've got this triple top formation at this essentially key resistance area that you could call it. And well, let's have a look at this. So here's the key detail, watch this, right? So the fact that price breaks here, I would have been put off by that. I would have been like, okay, well, price has broken the top of structure now. Essentially, I would have called it the resistance level. And I'll be looking for a break, a retest, and then potentially head higher. However, it's about how we break. Like I said before, it's not necessarily about the fact that we're broken. This is what catches people on the wrong side of the market. I've talked about this in a few videos in the past, but it's just the psychology of the market. All this is doing by essentially breaking this resistance level correctively is getting people caught on the wrong side of the market before the bigger moves. What that essentially is, is the central banks around the world, the bigger industries, the bigger hedge funds essentially, is just driving price up essentially called pricing in, getting people caught on the wrong side of the move before the bigger moves lower, washing all the orders out before the moves. So we can see this here, right? So the fact that we've broken, I wouldn't know what to do with that. Now, if I just look at it from a pattern perspective and we just delete this and let's just clean this up a bit and let's just draw in structure. You can see here, we've got this one, two, one, two, third touch. This is acting as a bigger impulse. This is the impulsive move to the downside. This is just the overall bigger continuation. Looking for that next impulsive leg to here, to this level here, potentially longer term. How quick that happens remains to be seen, but looking at that. And within this nature here, if we just take the bars pattern tool and just use this, acting as an extra confluence essentially. This is got here, one, two, three, clear ascending structure and what we have within it, right? So we have this impulse, this middle section as a continuation, this move up before the bigger move down. So that's a no brainer, looking for selling opportunities here, but I could see quite easily how that will catch you on the wrong side of the market. And it's just, it happens in such a mass way across the board, which I just see over and over again. And again, there's nothing wrong with trading this style. If it works for you, you can make it work, then that's totally fine. But for me personally, it just never really sat with well with me. So. That's what I was looking at. And if we just look at this, see how we just creep higher? And it wouldn't surprise me if we get a rejection around these areas or we just break higher and then catch people on the wrong side before they move lower. There we go. So rejection there, one, two, three, looking more downside. And then we get impulse, continuation, moving lower. And then yeah, impulse, continuation, looking for more moves to the downside right now. There you go. So it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. The impulse, the continuation, the impulse, the correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction as a running channel, impulse, and then move, final move to the downside. So it's no surprise that that move's played out 
and again, I want to state this, I've seen this example play out over and over and over again, so I know how this is going to play out, but at the same time, it's just to showcase the exact example of why I don't trade support resistance, you know? So the fact that, it, I just see this happen over and over and over again, where things are too black and white, you'll see a key, a key support or resistance level break to the upside, or there's a downside and you won't know what to do next. Whereas the key thing to take away from this video is about how we break. It's about the nature of how price breaks. If we break correctively, like we did here, then there's a potential that the pattern may be evolved and we may be coming to the downside. Or if we impulse to the upside, it's about the fact of what we get next. So if, if this impulse to the upside here, let's rewind price a little bit. So if we have that level in there, right? Let's just use this, right? Say for example, we impulse to the upside, it's about what happens next. So do we impulse to the upside, get a, a clear continuation and then look for more longs? Or do we impulse to the upside, retrace the move, get continuation and then continue dropping? So there's so many little details within it, but I think it's just so much clearer from my perspective, looking at the markets in this sort of a, a clearer standpoint. And it just, it's just so, there's just so much clarity when I look at charts like this in that way. So definitely nothing against support resistance, but that's my personal experience with it. So that was the first question on support or resistance. Hope you enjoyed that example. And got a few things to do today with it being the last day before Amsterdam. So I need to head to the bank and get some euros in cash and I uh, need to get a few things from the shop as well. So yeah, I'm gonna bring you with me and I'm gonna answer the questions throughout the day. So let's go on travels. So I'm just parked outside the shop, gonna go in soon, but I wanted to answer another question before I go in. So the second question I got was, what is your biggest struggle right now? So it's a great question actually. And other than the self-sabotage and limited beliefs that I was talking about on the last video, um, I'm currently working through that. But a thing that I'm working through as well is actually dropping the employed mentality. I feel like not a lot of people talk about this either. And um, I guess it comes with like working nine to five and growing up within a, an education system that promotes this I guess routine where you're just meant to you know do these certain tasks go home like it's just the same routine day in day out and I had that in my 9 to 5 as well I'm grateful for everything that my 9 to 5 produced because it's brought me to where I am now but at the same time I have to drop that mentality so although I'm part-time right now I'm part-time working things like that I feel like when it gets to like one or two o'clock in the afternoon I feel like okay well I, I know I have to go to the office in a couple of hours time and it's just that, I guess it's just a mindset that just feels stuck when that time frame comes around during the day. And that, what I've been trying to do sh recently is shift that mentality. So rather than thinking, okay, well I have to go to the office for two, three hours. Now I'm thinking, okay, well I'm just nipping out for a couple of hours during the day and then I get, get to come back and then go on the charts again or do, do work on whatever I want to work on. And it's just that different mentality approach. I guess it's just shifting that belief. So yeah, that's one thing that I'm struggling with right now. Um, but it's also something that I'm practically working on as well. So I wouldn't say I'm struggling with that, but it's something that I'm working on right now. And um, I guess it's, it has been a struggle over the last couple of months. So so yeah, that's something that I'm working on right now, trying to drop that employed mentality. And I'm not expecting it to come overnight. It takes time and stuff, but yeah, it, it's just a process. I'm happily working through that. So yeah, you just have to understand that in investors think on a quarterly basis, on a six month basis, and on a yearly basis. Like they don't do not think in terms of months, weeks, or daily. Like it's just a short term employed mentality that you just have to drop. So especially in trading, it's so key to judge your results on a quarterly basis, on a six month basis, and on an annual basis. It'd be so easy to slip into that monthly mentality of wanting, wanting the market to give you a wage each month, like it doesn't work like that. Like you may get a corrected month, you may get an impulsive month. Like the market doesn't care about that employed mentality, like you have to drop it. So you can't expect the same amount every month, whether it's returns, whether it's a monetary amount, like you can't put that belief on the market. Like you have to let the market do its thing. It takes time to develop these structures. These structures then play out. So you have to think longer term. And that's something that I guess I've had struggle dropping, but I'm, I'm, I'm practically putting into place now. So. Yeah, there's something that I'm still working on. Yo, all these thoughts keep me up at night. Yeah, what am I doing? Did I do it right? Yeah, all these thoughts keep me up at night. Yeah, I can't think straight, need the light. I need to breathe. Get me up and out of the sheets. Under my feet, another cup of coffee in me. That's what I need. My eyes puffy, I can't see. I'm too tired to function, but too lost to sleep. Hey, I think I need to be on something medication. So the next question is in regards to social media. So social media, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing for trading? The truth is it depends how you use it, right? So it, it can be a positive thing, but it can also be a negative thing. Here's what I mean. 
Positive in the respect that if you're following the right people who are positive, who are uplifting, who are bringing you value, then I don't really see a downside to it as long as you're not getting too caught up in their daily lives. However, if you're using it and it's a distraction for you and you're using it to, for example, post pictures that almost you validate the opinions of other people above your own, then that's when I think it becomes a problem because you start comparing yourself to other people and that's where the, that's where the ego kicks in, that's where the problems occur. Because you just care too much about what other people think, like you don't value your own opinion over anyone else. Everyone else's opinion becomes above your own, that's the problem. That way you're never gonna think for yourself. Like you have to realize, right, 95% of people on social media do not even think for themselves. Like they're always following people, they're always, they're always with the masses. It's only when you stop looking two feet in front of you, lift your head up, see what the majority of people are doing and then ask yourself those questions. Like, why are we doing this? Like, st start asking those quality questions. That's the key thing. And uh, it's the same with social media. Like, if you follow someone, for example, with a big following, right? If they're, if they're adopting that same mentality where they're comparing themselves to other people, they're posting photos that they're, they're seeking validation for everything, the ego's involved you will just naturally adopt that same mentality. It's just a spiral. And if you think about it, social media is just that big machine that everyone just seems to compare themselves against other people. It's just the wrong mindset. Like you're always living up to that expectation that other people put on yourselves and you're never gonna be the true version of yourself. So you have to just let that go and just be you. Like that's the biggest thing I'll say. And don't get me wrong, I'm still on this journey too. Like I fully haven't got rid of that mentality of actually caring what other people think. Like I'm, I'm almost there, I've definitely come a long way, but at the same time it's still there. So I'm still on that journey too and I think it's just a natural thing that social media brings about it, but you just have to let it go. Thinking longer term, you have to be yourself. You have to, it's a cliche saying, right? But you just have to let go of that social expectation of yourself and you just have to follow the right people and use social media for the good things. So a question that I get quite a lot just to end out this video, this is a super interesting one as well, is did you have support from family members, friends, things like that when you first started trading? So great question, yes and no. So I've had a lot of support along my journey. I'm super grateful for that and I'll always be grateful for that. Like I'll never not appreciate that for the things that, that people have done for me and like so, so grateful for that and I always will be. But at the same time, there was a period within my journey when I first started trading where no, no one is really gonna get your vision, right? When you first, when you go against the grain, no one is gonna get your vision. You can't expect them to. It will be unrealistic to expect them to see your vision. The key thing is you have to do what's right for you, right? If it's a goal you're chasing after, just go after it. If it means going against the grain, then you go against the grain. Like, it's as simple as that. You have to think of the alternative. You get 40, 50 years down the line and then you just end up resenting your parents for the choices that you made to follow what they wanted you to do rather than what you wanted to do. So you have to, if it means going through three years of struggle with your parents right now so that you can help them out in the future, buy them houses, take them on holidays, then you have to do what you have to do. Stop thinking short term, think longer term. Like that's the situation I wanna be in. I wanna be able to help out my parents longer term. Like you, going through six months of struggle with them is not an issue longer term. So you have to get out of that mindset and just think longer term. So you have to think for yourself. If your parents want you to go to university, for example, and you would start a business and you can't say no to them and follow your own path, right? How do you expect to run a business? How do you expect to do all these things that you want to do in the future? You're not going to be able to. Like you have to get that conviction. You have to develop that character to just be able to say no to them and just be able to think longer term, despite them, despite what they say, you have to be able to think longer term and think about that vision of where you wanna go and what you wanna do. So in the long term, it's gonna benefit them, it's gonna benefit you anyways. You have to think in that longer term mindset. Also, one last thing, in regards to that last question, if you do wanna reach out and just ask any more questions, then hit me up on Instagram and let me know and just feel free to reach out. I wanna be that person that you can reach out to and you can talk to. Like I didn't have any of that when I first started for the first few months and that was difficult, so why I wanna be that person that gives value, I wanna be that person that helps out and I'll just do my best to help out as much as I can. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Really good answering these questions, great questions by the way. And uh, yeah, can't wait for answer them tomorrow. So. That's gonna be the next video, cannot wait for that. But yeah, have a great week and I'll speak to you all soon.